Hi, my name is Scott Forsyth. This is part 7 of a 52-week series on various web administration related videos. Last week I covered SSL certs and the chicken before the egg issue. If you haven't seen that yet, I encourage you go back, take a look at it. It covers some foundational stuff leading up to what I want to be covering here today. And so one of the key takeaways that I did mention is that if you can use a dedicated IP for every site that has SSL bindings, do so. It's going to be a lot easier for you. You don't have to wrestle with what we're covering here now. Uh, but there's certain times where you want to share that IP, and so that's exactly what I'm covering today. And with some of the tricks I'm going to show you, it's really not too difficult at all. First, let me show you kind of the gotcha. And if we go to our bindings, and if we were to add a new binding, notice that the host name here is grayed out. And so what we want to do is figure out how do we populate that value with host headers. First, a little bit of theory. If we are sharing an IP, we must also share the certificate. So you can't have completely unique certificates. If you do have a number of sites with very similar names, for example, what I'm going to be using for the examples today is help.orgsweb.com, info.orgsweb.com, and support.orgsweb.com. So those are three similar sites and similar names. If you do, you can use, in this case, a wildcard certificate. And another option that's available more recently is what's called a unified communication certificate, or SAN stands for Subject Alternative Name. And this is originally made for Exchange Server and Office Communication Server so that you can have multiple names within the same certificate. For, for example, a public and an internal domain name at the exact same time. This can actually be used publicly now as well, and most certificate authorities will allow you to purchase this. So if you do have, let's say, just a few different unique domain names, you can buy them within a single certificate now and use the tricks I'm going to be showing you here today. Um, so similar to the first point, but only one certificate is supported for every unique IP address. Important to keep in mind. And also IIS Manager makes this difficult for us. And that's on purpose, and I'll tell you in a minute what the backstory is on that. So if we go and add a certificate, as I also showed you just a minute ago, and we'll, let's say we'll specify the IP and the certificate, the host name is blank. So here's an interesting backstory on this. When Windows Server 2008 was first in beta, prior to when it was released, this host name was not grayed out. So the IS team had developed the functionality, but what they found is it was almost too dumbed down for people. Because of the unique requirements here with the IP, things I've been covering here, it was too, too easy for people. And so they purposely removed this and made it a little bit more difficult. So I'll show you how to get around this. And so the trick, there's really two ways to do this, and I'm going to show you a little known trick that actually makes it really easy and you can do it completely from IIS Manager. You don't have to go to the command prompt and use app command. And secondly, after that, I'm going to show you how to do it with app command if you do need to do that way. And finally, I'll show you briefly how to do it in IIS 6 as well. So the trick is actually with the name of the certificate. If the certificate friendly name starts with an asterisk, then it will actually, the host name will show up. So let's try it out. Now, to get to the certificates, it's one of the few snap-ins that's not available here. Notice it's not available in administration tools. So you're going to have to go to MMC, and which is Microsoft Management Console. We'll add the console here under the computer account. Hit Next, and local computer is good. We'll hit OK. And so now if we expand out to wherever your certificate is stored, and again, I didn't cover how to create the certificate. I'm assuming prior to this you've already created your CSR, submitted that to your certificate authority, and they would have given you a certificate back which you would have imported, and it's going to look something like this. So once you do that, you can go into the snap-in like this, and we can edit it, the properties, and notice here with the friendly name. The trick is just put an asterisk in front of it, or a star, whatever you want to call it, and it's going to work for you. So let's actually try it out. Let's go to help.orgsweb.com. Go to our binding, select HTTPS, and we don't have to specify the IP if we only have one on the server, but let's be specific about this and watch this. Look at that. So now if we have the asterisk.orgsweb.com, the host name is going to show up. And this is by far the easiest way to do it. Great trick. So we're going to do that for here. Let's do this for the next site. And finally, we'll do it for a third. OK. 
Okay, and let's test it out, confirm this works. So if we go to https colon slash slash help.orgsweb.com, and I've just added a host entry to hotwire this to go to my local machine. So there we go. So we can see help goes to help. Info, info, and support will also work. So that's the fun way. That's the easy way. Let me show you the traditional way that other people will show you how to do it. And if you don't have the option of renaming the friendly name for that certificate, then you're going to have to do this other way. So let's remove these. And I'll pause it for a second while I do so. Okay, that's done. So here's how to do it using app command. First of all, we select one of the sites. Let's just, to be neat, let's use help. And actually, this is where the master binding is needed to remain. So you probably do want to pick one that makes sense. And so we create a new binding here. And I want to be specific about the IP. And so let's go and select, let's use contoso.com just because it doesn't have the asterisk at the beginning. And I'm going to hit OK. And that's done. So now what we do is we go to the command prompt and we're going to use a tool called app command. I'll cover this in a future video. And it's made available for Microsoft for command line administration. Great for batch scripts and in this case for some more advanced functionality. So that's in system32 inet serve. And the syntax for that is app command set site and then you have the site name and we're going to change this to whatever our site name is. So let's make this help.orgsweb.com. It doesn't matter which order you do these in. And But it does matter that the IP, remember I was specific when I created the binding before, then I need to be specific here as well. If I was using a wildcard previously, I use a wildcard here. So we have help dot, info dot, and then support dot. You don't have to watch me while I do support. We've got info dot. So I do these two for now. And if I go to help, notice it has the original binding. This is the master one. You can't remove this. In fact, if you try to, it's going to give you a warning that this is also associated with other sites. Deleting it will cause the HTTPS bindings of the others to be unusable. Do you want to continue? So we're going to say no. So leave that one around, and we're going to here. Here's the new one that was created for us using Contosa.com. He was able to figure that out from the master binding, and same here. We see that he uses Contosa.com from the master binding. So now, if I go to help or info, and it works, it gives me a warning because we're using the self-signed cert Contosa.com, which is not a real certificate, and it doesn't match the name. There's two reasons why it's going to fail. But see here we have our help. And we also have info will work. Uh, but notice that support I haven't yet set up. And what's going to happen here? And support is still going to the help, which is where the wildcard certificate is. So actually that leads us to another question that a few people ask is what if you don't want to do that? For example, I don't want to go to Contoso, HTTPS Contoso.com and get the help site. And so what I would recommend in this case is use something like URL rewrite, which I'll cover in the future, but we'll just do something like a quick rule here. Let's do a blank rule. And let's say only serve oh, help. That works well .com. So we're going to be specific here. And the pattern is a dot asterisk, which means catch everything. And we're going to use HTTP host. And let's make this help.orgsweb.com. We want to be really specific. We start off with our caret, end with the and sign. And to be literal, we should really do in slash dots as well. Again, we'll cover this in a future video. And so what in this case, what I want to do is if it's, edit that one more time, and does not match the pattern, then let's just abort the request. Done. So now if we try to come in to support dot, notice we get a failed request. So this way at least we don't get the wrong site that serves it up. And the other ones don't matter because this is where the master one lives. And so that's the only one that really matters in this case. And finally, what do we do for IS6? And I'm actually going to cheat and let's just point you to a really good blog that shows how to do this and SSLshopper.com. I'll include this link 
here as well in my blog. And so basically if we scroll down, we create the binding exactly like we did with IS7, but then we use prior to app command, we have this adsutil.vbs. And so that's located in C, inet, pub, admin scripts, and we would run this, C script, adsutil, and you must find this site identifier. You can do that from the websites with the identifier, and you do w3svc slash site identifier, secure bindings, and you'd use the exact same syntax that we covered here previously on the video. And once you do that, it's going to add the additional sites, uh, really the exact same concept that we saw previously with IS7. So with this, we can see how we can use IS7 or IS6, how we can use multiple bindings for certificates. Uh, quickly review, though, it's really important that there must be a unique certificate per IP. You can use a wildcard certificate, or you can use a unified communication certificate or SAN certificate. And uh, IS Manager makes this difficult for us, but that is on purpose, to, so it's not too dumbed down that people are using it incorrectly. So they want to make sure you understand a little bit of the background before you're using these certificates. Hope you find this useful, and again, I hope to see you next week. Thank you.